thank you. It's, it's great to be here up on stage and talk to you, to you a bit about the clinical genetics and what we are doing there with DNA Nexus. So I'm a, a data and technology guy, so I usually get really interested and, uh, and excited about new technologies and so on. And I often forget about our real customers, which are the patients. So I try to remind myself every now and then and start by actually talking about them. So Blueprint Genetics, we are mainly focusing on uh, rare uh, disease genetics. And rare diseases affect over 350 million people worldwide. And these are often really like devastating, life-changing diseases. So it might mean that you are in constant pain. It might mean that you cannot live a normal life. It might dictate if you can marry or have children. And it might, um, uh, it's also a question of if your uh, disease can be treated or if there is even a hope of getting treatment. So getting these answers is really crucial for these patients. And as we've, uh, as we've heard today, uh, if we are talking about genetics, uh, getting, getting to those answers, it's not trivial. So we have uh, loads of data from a whole genome. If you do a deep coverage sequencing, you get hundreds of billions of uh, data points that you then crunch to um, uh, roughly 5 million personal DNA variants. And, uh, uh, and the case with uh, these rare genetic diseases is that you often have only one variant that's actually causing the disease. So it's really like finding the needle from a haystack. So how do we actually approach this and try to solve and tackle this challenge at Blueprint Genetics? So Blueprint Genetics, we are an end-to-end -end, uh, uh, clinical genetic uh, diagnostic company. So this is kind of like simple what, what many other companies are doing. So most of our clients are uh, clinicians who are treating patients so there is some kind of uh, suspicion of a genetic background for the disease. And they, send in a, they, they order a test, send in a sample. We do DNA sequencing. Then we do uh, data analysis and interpret the results. Basically, the end, end product from our service is a clinical statement telling what we did, what were the findings, and if there is something, some recommendations about what to, what to do about it. So, we sometimes joke that we are actually selling PDFs, and that's what our uh, product basically is. Uh, so, a uh, bit more about Blueprint. So, we are a global company. We are based in Finland. Uh, we were founded in 2012, and our HQ is, is in Finland, but we also have office in San Francisco. We opened a lab in Seattle just last month, and we have a sales office in Dubai as well. Uh, we are, we, right now, I think our headcount is around 170, close to that. And our bigger, biggest markets are USA, Canada, and the Nordic countries. So, a bit more about uh, our pipeline and what we are actually doing. So, we are running the uh, Illumina Nova 6000 platform. And uh, we, we get data out of that. We have a bioinformatics pipeline to crunch the data. That's implemented in DNA Nexus. We've been using DNA Nexus now for uh, uh, roughly two years. Uh, what we get out from the pipeline is the pre-processed variants. And then we have uh, our own in-house developed uh, tool called Clint that we use to interpret the data. And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a bit more about the interpretation, but I think that's a big part of what we are doing. So we basically have a team of over 30 PhD level clinical geneticists who actually look at the data and do the uh, classification of the variants, trying to identify the pathogenic variants and then prepare the clinical statement. So uh, what actually happens when we run uh, one of our, our products and runs? Uh, our standard sequencing run is 180, 88 uh, patient uh, samples. So we do pretty much only exome sequencing. So a lot of our products are panels or single genes, but even for them, we actually run the whole exome and then just slice out the panel or, or the gene of interest. This basically means that each of our production runs has a footprint of uh, over five terabytes of data and consumes over 2,000 computing hours. And this is something that DNA Nexus actually enable, enables us to do. 
handle, handle these kind of volumes of, of data and compute. And why this is of uh, interest to us, and, and why, why the impact of DNA Nexus and having a scalability here is meaningful. So uh, we are really scaling up our operations rapidly. Our revenue and sample volumes have uh, multiplied year by year. And so this is uh, uh, our monthly patient, uh, uh, monthly patient volumes since the founding of the company in 2012. This is actually the slope is quite, quite similar to what we saw in the first presentation today of the growth of DNA Nexus. So uh, I, I think that when the company was founded, uh, it took a couple of months for us to get the first sample in and a couple of months to analyze the first sample. And, and even though the whole company was working on the one sample, and then it was a couple of months before the next same sample came in. So we've kind of grown quite a lot since then. And uh, I think where we see this really big growth is around 2015, which actually is the same when DNA Nexus started seeing growth. I think, well, sometimes I've plotted this curve against the price of sequencing per base pair. And you can see that around this time, there is a big shift there. So that might be the driver, driver behind there. So uh, anyway, this is the amount of samples just coming uh, through our doors. But maybe one more, even more important thing is that around 2017, so, or late 2017, we were one of the first Illumina customers to purchase the Novaseek. So it was somewhere, I don't know, around here. And then we started to do the whole genome, uh, whole exome sequencing. And that actually generates much more data than we were able to produce prior to this. And so it's not just more and more samples, but per sample we get so much more data as well. So this is really where having the bioinformatics in a cloud uh, makes, makes things possible and makes the R&D significantly faster and also ensures that we have the resources to actually run the bioinformatics in production as well. So uh, our, our thinking right now is that the bottleneck, it's not in the sequencing anymore. We can go and buy more NovaSeq if we want. That's not a problem. We can scale the bioinformatics uh, into cloud. That's not a problem. So that's one, one challenge that DNA Nexus has helped us to solve. So now the bottleneck it really is in the interpretation. So as I said, we have a team of over 30 PhD level clinical geneticists. So getting uh, one NovaSeq is not a problem, but getting 30 more uh, experienced clinical geneticists, that, that's the problem. So I, I think when we are talking about scaling, this is the thing that we are now trying to solve. And so uh, one of the solutions for this, uh, I know that AI is a hype word and I actually use the term augmented intelligence here. So we try to provide our interpretation team with tools that automate uh, uh, as much as, as we can from the interpretation process. So increase speed, but also increase quality. So some things what we are doing in practice. So a big part of clinical diagnostics is finding the relevant scientific literature because all of your diagnosis, it needs to be based on existing knowledge. You cannot do like research based or guesswork. You have to have some kind of foundation uh, where you base your diagnosis. So finding the uh, right literature, that's one of the bottlenecks. Uh, then highlighting relevant information, uh, that's also, also one of the things. So really, if you have a whole genome of five million variants, uh, highlighting the really, really the relevant parts, that's one thing. Then the variant classification. So we've done a lot of progress, progress in developing machine learn, learning based variant classifiers. So we, are, we have this uh, team of over 30 clinical geneticists who actually create data for us all day. So they created a massive database. So we have one of the biggest rare disease databases in the world that we are actually using to teach the uh, machine learning uh, classifiers. And so th this is one, one thing how, how we want to actually help, help our interpretation team. Another thing is the collective intelligence. So basically when we encounter a patient or a variant which is similar to something that we've seen before. So we get uh, 
notifications about that. So the interpretation team can check out that, okay, uh, you, you actually have seen something like this prior to this, and that will also speed up the process. And then one of the bottlenecks is actually the statement generation. So how to automate that? Because the statement, it's our end product, and the clinician who is treating the patients, they oftentimes they might, might have just a couple of minutes to read through the statement before they are meeting the patient. So the statement has ha needs to have all of the relevant information in a like a human readable, understandable format, in a format that even a clinician can understand. So that's that's a big challenge. So how, how do you actually automate that? And uh, oops. That's all I have, have for you guys today, so thank you for this chance, and uh, if there are, are any questions, let me know.